Hey guys, what's up? Welcome back to my channel. Um, today I'm going to be packing apart my gorgeous Nepenthes Miranda and sharing um, some of my favorite gardening hacks with you. Please don't forget to like and subscribe. Hey guys, what's up? Welcome back to my channel. I am here today with my Nepenthes Miranda. Um, this lovely specimen. I've had this plant for about five years and it's time to give her a prune and I'm gonna go through some of the specifics. If you're new to um, pitcher plants or Nepenthes, I'm gonna go over some of the um, specifics for what, um, what how to manage their care and how to make the best of them and make them last as long as possible. A lot of people make a lot of really simple mistakes with these plants that really jeopardizes their ability to thrive. And so for that reason, I wanted to take a few minutes today to make a little video and my plants have actually gotten so out of control that I'm going to um, do some cutting and some rooting of some cuttings to hopefully make some new plants. Um, it's one of my favorite plants because it helps to mitigate um, insect control. And it has a symbiotic relationship with like uh, frogs and lizards. They provide some fertilizer to the pitchers and also use them as a place to get like a free meal <laughs> kind of deal. I don't know where my clippers went, but I'll pause and come back to the actual cutting part. So. This is my lovely plant, and as you can see, she's got some sunburn on her. Um, the leaves will burn. If you leave them in direct sunlight with water on the leaves, the sunlight will magnify and ultimately burn the plant, and they can be a little sensitive to that. In thinking about where these would naturally appear in the world, um, you would see them in the rainforest, and what they do is they produce this really yummy, nectar oh look this one's not open yet i don't know if you can tell i hope you can tell i'll bring it a little closer to the camera that the um lip hasn't opened on this yet it's a really new picture um sometimes the pictures come out a little green but that's what they look like they have this nice covering in them so that water doesn't get in them they actually produce their own nectar and if you shake the plant whenever you see if you ever see one of these you'll hear water down in there and if you were to pour it out, you would see all of the insects, um, mostly white flies and smaller insects um, that kind of get trapped in there. Every once in a while, you'll catch a mosquito, which is awesome. I am actually getting bit by a mosquito right now because it's Florida. We have officially entered our summer season and it's, um, it's raining and it's been raining for like three days now. And um, I'm not going to do my hair or my makeup, and so that's why you're not going to see me in the actual uh, video here. Um, when you're growing and caring for these plants, they do require a wet base. So they should be kept moist, wet, watering every single day um, without fail. Um, the other thing is, and this is one of the reasons why I think I've been so successful with these particular plants. I've had them for quite a while, five years is a long time. They're not particularly fast growing plants, but I do not, um, I don't prune often. So you see how this um, picture is looking kind of dead and like maybe it's something that you would wanna cut off because it's not pretty. Well, the plant is still eating and the plant is still eating until all the energy from every part of this picture has gone back to the base of the plant so I would not prune this leaf this is a leaf that I would prune that I would say is done the leaf is brown to the stem the pitcher is completely brown and shriveled and that to me means that it is ready to prune so let me grab my pruning shears because I just spotted them and I'm gonna come back and trim a couple of places on here and then we'll go from there Okay, I'm back and I've got my shears here. Whenever I'm pruning anything, um, I like to take like an old towel. This is one of those fancy Ikea towels that you get by the checkout for like 80 cents a piece. 
so they are like very functional to have around the house. I really like those. So I will just trim this right here at the base. And I'm just gonna go through and do that. So as I'm here cutting away at this lovely plant, um, I wanted to give you some specific information about the Nepenthes Miranda. This particular pitcher plant is considered sterile. It does make a really beautiful flower spike a couple times a year, but it will never give you a seed from it in order to grow a new plant. And so what you see is available to purchase is done through propagation. Um, hope you keep enjoying the cutting and um, yeah, let me get back to it. by using a rooting hormone as opposed to using nothing at all. Um, and that's the school I'm in <laughs> as far as propagating plants is concerned. Um, I have some orchid moss here that I've already soaked. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to fill my little with about a third of the way. Um, but then I'm curious to see if the clear will work better than the dark ones. Well, honestly, I don't know that it really matters, but I'm leaving a little room to add more um, so that I can support the stem. I, these don't have a really large um, stem base on them, so that kind of is going to be a little bit more challenging. Yeah, so another really cool thing about the Nepenthes Miranda, or any Nepenthes for that matter, is um, besides water and shade, adequate shade, um, you don't do anything else to them. So that makes them very luminous. There's virtually no additional upkeep included in them. A lot of people keep these as hanging plants. I don't um, because I like to have the ease of watering and my patio height is pretty high so it would be kind of a pain for me to get on a ladder every time I want to water them so keeping that in mind um, so what I am going to do oh is what I usually do and I'm going to put a little bit of my reading karma into the top I will wash my hands for you after handling this and then what I'm going to do is I'm just going to coat the bottom of this and then I am going to pretend like I'm sticking it in there but I'm really not. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to add some more um, moss around it to support it to give it a better opportunity and it'll put its roots out either. Hopefully uh, I'll see, I'll have some success with that. And I'm gonna just provide a nice shady little area for this to hang out. And begin with like, I should have used a wider pot. Mm. Oh well. <laughs> anyway, let me, uh, let me keep on keeping on. And then I'll show you my mistake. Oh, I did to do that. That was hard. Harsh. There we go. 
don't think I'm going to do Yeah, I use rooting hormone for pretty much everything that I propagate only because um, I like to be successful and um, I will teach you the greatest gardening trick ever now. Um, when you're growing plants, especially uh, plants for, your, for eating, <gasps> oh no, I broke it, oopsies, oh well, oh, we'll see what happens with that. And when you're growing plants to eat, um, always plant 50% more. That way, if half of it dies, um, that's no harm at all. You still have food to eat. <laughs> and that's my ultimate gardening hack. <laughs> oh boy. Oh, these little, okay, so where the pictures are going to start, from. Is that the cutest thing you've ever seen in your life? No, probably not. It's not that exciting to anybody else. Um, yeah, I'm gonna just I'm gonna remove these two bottom layers because they're a little bit damaged. I'm, I'm a notorious cross contaminator. I'm I'm not sorry. I'm not sorry. Oh, I wonder if I should put more than one in here. Let's do it. Let me think. Hmm. Yeah, whatever. I think the more we put in, the fuller the plants will be. So that's kind of the idea, right? I'll do some singles and I'll do this one as a double. So yeah, so um, plant 50%. It's an old gardening hack. <laughs> um, especially with planting seeds. Seeds are kind of um, one of those things that you, it's really hard to tell the efficacy. Somebody could germinate seeds and they just have like the right elements in their soil and so everything germinates for them. Um, but if you're not, you know, the same or you're not using the same kind of soil that they're using, you might see different results. So that's there's another little one. Right okay. Start those. And again, like I love these plants. I think they're absolutely a must have plant for any house, especially in Florida. But if you're someplace like damp and wet, I don't know that these would do well in a very dry climate. I don't know that they would do well in a climate that's um, gets a cold winter. Like where I am in Florida, our winters really never get below 45, 50 degrees. We're in 10B, which is our um, zone. Okay. Sure, they're USDA agricultural zone. Um, yeah. So I've got a little bit of moss left. I'm actually going to take a little bit out of here so I can add a little more water to it. Um, this moss is mixed with rainwater. I have a rain barrel and I um, have noticed a dramatic improvement in my plants. Now, this is my biggest gamble right here. This has two large pitchers. I cut this and I'm an idiot and I probably should have not cut this but hey we'll see what happens you know gardening is about patience and experimentation and it's a really important um, wonderful process especially for children to learn but for everyone young and old um, to be a gardener is really to appreciate the planet that has like i can't even touch that with this no i might need to make a little more this to make a little more moss to make this one work. Let's add a little more moss. So this is dry. People use this for orchids. I think this is um, one of the fastest way to get bugs in your orchids. I don't think this is a good medium. Um, and again, these need to stay damp. So the moss also isn't really the greatest medium for these guys, but 
Um, for rooting them, I'll probably add a little bit of um, peat moss on top, which is okay. Um, probably better off to invest in coconut core, but I still have like two cubic meters of um, peat moss. So thank you so much for um, joining me today and sharing my bliss with me. Gardening is my absolute favorite thing in the whole entire world. Um, and I hope that these little propagated cuttings prove to be a fruitful endeavor. Um, catch you in the next one. Bye.